With the Skaven Tide clan rats already landing at the shores of Fair Farig, now it's time to get the massive rat ogres painted and ready to join their Skaven brethren. To start things off, I decided to give each rat ogre different colours with their skin and fur going to be different from each other. I based the models with a white undercoat because my grey can had just run out. The three colours I used to base the skin was Rackart Flesh, Bugman's Glow and Catechin Flesh. I found it hard to separate parts of the skin that has fur on it, so I painted the deeper parts of skin. For the fur, I wanted three different colours on each one, so I went to Carver's Black, Dawnstone and then Storm Vermin. Dawnstone and Storm Vermin are both grey, but that will change when it comes to the shading. It's important at this stage to make sure to cover any of the white undercoat, because any missed parts really stick out later on. There are a good few metal parts on the ogres like their hand weapons, shoulder pads, head armour and chains. So I use lead belcher on them and I use rune lord brass on the pump things that they also have. Even rat ogres need something to keep their pants up, or in this case their cloth, and I use Doombull Brown on the belts to give them a leather look. And the part that the belt is holding up is the cloth, and I use Avalon Sunset to get a solid base colour on it. For their large teeth and big nails, I use Flayed on Flesh to colour them in. I also use it on the ropes on one of the guys that has it on his face. With most of the base coats on, it was time to start shading the skin and I started off with Reikland Flesh Shed on the Rat Ogre with the Rack Heart Flesh on. For the pink mid-tone ogre, I went a bit darker and I used Agrax Earth Shed. And then for the Cadage and Flesh Ogre, I didn't want to darken it much more than it is, so I went back to Reikland Flesh Shed and shaded it with that. For the fur, Nullin Oil was the first choice to go over the Covers Black Rat Ogre. For the lighter grey fur, I used Gulliman Flesh, but when it came to the darker grey fur on the third guy, I tried using Gore Grunter fur, which is a really good contrast paint, but I misjudged how strong it was. And instead of having a grey fur with a light brown shade, it ended up turning into just brown fur. I should have diluted it more, but the result was okay in the end, and I can brighten it back up in the highlighting part later on. I used Nullin Oil on the silver and brass parts to darken them down. The final shade was then the yellow, and I went with Seraph from Sepia to tone down the Avalon Sunset slightly. Now it came to the tricky part of highlighting the skin. I nervously started off with Flayed on Flesh on the first Rat Ogre, and picking out little parts like bumps and lines on the hands, and they were turning out pretty good. But then I tried the face, and it seemed like there was just too much contrast on it, and it wasn't working too well. I'll leave it for now, but I'll come back to it later on to try and do something about it. I kept the highlights a bit more subtle on the next two rat ogres with Cadian Flesh Tone over the Bugman's Glow and Night Quester over the Cadogan Flesh. But the fur highlighting went very smooth. I started off by dry brushing Storm Vermin fur all over the Carver's Black, but it wasn't bright enough when it dried, so I went over it again with Dawnstone. Crack Stone was then used over the Dawnstone, and at first I was a bit hesitant about using Scrag Brown as the highlight over the new brown fur, but it turned out really nice. The cloth was then highlighted along the edges and the high parts with Uriel Yellow. The last highlight was then Stormhole Silver all over the metal parts. Coming back to the ogre with the Flayed One Flesh highlights, and the way I want to go about fixing this is to try and blend it better with the Rackhart Flesh underneath. So I took out Reikland Flesh Shade again, and just shaded along the area. It tones the Flayed One Flesh just enough so it doesn't stick out as much. With the bulk of the models painted, there were a few small parts left to finish. Starting off with the Warp Stone, there are a few different ways about going to paint gems, but I wanted it to make it really easy as possible. So I started with two thin coats of Corax White. When dry, I wanted to try this pot of Tesseract Glow that has been on my painting shelf for ages. So I thin it down with some lamb and medium and add two layers. Then, as steady as I could, I also add some into the cracks of the skin. For the eyes, I went with Wild Rider Red, the brightest red that I had. And I held my breath and with a steady hand, I was able to add just enough onto the eyes to get them covered. Then with a heavily diluted carver crimson, I added a tiny bit just to shade them down. I wanted to make the skin look a bit more raw looking between the skin and the fur, so I added carver crimson along the edges of the skin. 
It's subtle under brown skin, but a lot more noticeable under lighter skin tones. The final part I wanted to add was the rust effect on the models. For this I took riser rust from the paint shelf and this is a great paint for doing simple rust and I don't see people using it that often. I started dry brushing it on and I think it turned out great for a simple and easy rust effect. These new rat ogres are incredible and we were long overdue for some new ones. They're not overly detailed so it makes them easy to paint quickly, but they have enough detail to really flex your painting skills on them if you wanted to. But stay tuned, cause over the next coming weeks I'll be painting up the Skaven Tide Skaven and with some really nice models in it that I'm looking forward to painting. But if you like this video, make sure to let me know in the comment section below, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And once again, thanks for watching.